two terrifying minutes. And I just kept saying, Lord help, Lord help. Revealed 20 devastating miles. The day after is chaotic. It looked like a war zone. The largest of the 15 Memorial Day tornadoes, an EF4 ripping apart 4,000 Montgomery County properties. The whole gable end of the house and the roof was ripped off. Now, six months later, our team found challenges as varied as triumphs, ruins, and repairs, and an overall lingering emotional toll revealed, walking the path of the storm. A dangerous situation that has been ongoing is this, I'm sorry, I'm getting choked. It's okay. Uh, and, I, and I would advise anybody with kids, get, get the bike helmets on them. Put them in the basement, put the helmets on them. You know, this is not a time to think about anything looking silly. Please stay safe. Wow, Cheryl, it is unbelievable to think that it's been six months now since we were here in the WHIO TV studios on Memorial Day, living through those terrifying moments together and with our Channel 7 viewers. We were so worried about your safety for about three hours as 15 tornadoes hit across the Miami Valley. And at one point, McCall was even worried that the biggest storm, the EF4, might hit our downtown Dayton studio. Yeah, and that EF4 is our team's main focus. This map here shows you the 20 mile path that catastrophic tornado took that night across northern Montgomery. Montgomery County and six months later that still means issues for many Miami Valley residents in Montgomery County. Brookville and Trotwood were in the path of that storm. Terrace Park was the first neighborhood hit. And I could hear the tornado sirens for a split second, and I was like, we should probably get in the hallway. Yeah. It would turn out Kayla Benton rushing from work to here, what used to be her Brookville home, would save the college student and her family from a catastrophic EF4 tornado. It went dark and it went quiet, and then the tornado came right down the street. Now, six months after the largest of the Memorial Day tornadoes, their home is an unrecognizable large slab. The storm would devastate her Terrace Park neighborhood. Altogether on Memorial Day, 70% of her subdivision's 192 homes were destroyed or severely damaged. Well, the day after is chaotic. It looked like a war zone. Terrace Park landlord Bob Elkins knows all about the storm's lingering emotional toll. But it's amazing that the, my, of my three tenants, none of them were injured at all. Extensive damage meant his renters immediately lost their homes. That meant Elkins and his wife lost that income. Even though they're now rebuilding, they'll never be landlords again here. Both my wife and I have decided that the repairs were made, we're going to sell them. In all, most of the 228 Brookville homes damaged were in Terrace Park. At the time we started walking the storm's path last month, Brookville's city manager told our team 161 of those homes either had work completed or crews were making minor repairs. My, my insurance agent actually was standing here the very next morning. Despite all of that, Kayla's dad, Ed Kirkland, says his family's chosen to move. That night's constant visual reminder is just too much to bear. For other Terrace Park residents, our Dayton Daily News partners found time seems to be frozen. Well, I mean, some houses look like they weren't even touched. Some houses are gone completely. Others look like the storm was yesterday. These pictures show how some are proudly rebuilding, like Gloria and Kevin Pennington, who cannot imagine raising their four kids anywhere else. Others grappling with insurance battles are debating their futures. Like one in three were either destroyed or had major damage. So it's, you, you can tell how kind of hit and miss it was. At this point in the EF4 Twister's path, it was growing to its highest wind speeds, up close to 170 miles per hour. It was taking down trees and landmarks like the Hare Arena. We heard the vent in the bathroom like that, and it kept getting faster. Scary memories for Makila Bent. She and her dog champion survived the E of four huddling in her bathroom. 
just like she'd huddle as she held onto a basement pole during Xenia's deadly 1974 F5 twister. Well, who knew that I would be going through it again? And going through it, she has. Spent moved to Trotwood's Shiloh Garden subdivision one month before the tornado. Despite having insurance and moving back months ago, boards still line her windows. She and so many others in Shiloh Gardens say they've struggled with contractors. This tree trimmer was finishing up a job someone else was paid to do. A contractor backlog has also meant delays. Back on this October day, five months after the storm, was the first day work began on this waterlogged home. These two streets, I've seen, I've counted at least 18 homes that have been demolished. We had damages to the roof and uh, the exterior has been taken care of. But Bishop Alfred Ringer feels blessed. Insurance has covered most repairs. Inside, a diligent spirit, thanks primarily to nearby churches, is helping them rebuild. They brought their members over and that just showed you the heart of uh, Dayton. Strong hearts in the face of an uncertain future.